Do you like playing with balls? No, I'm not talking about footballs. I mean your balls. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming, want you to shave your pubes with the Tom Brady of ball trimmers, the brand-new Lawnmower 4.0, only the GOAT technology for the greatest balls of all time. When you're going towards the end zone, make sure you use the right tools for the job and choose Manscaped. Two million men worldwide trust them, so join the movement with our exclusive offer by using code DTR at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. Stafford, under pressure, and a tuck it away. He's in! Darryl. Henderson, he's off and running! As was oh. touchdown! Cooper Cup just went up and took it away. Van Jefferson for the touchdown! Aaron Donald smothers him. Jalen Ramsey put the pop on All right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Join here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And guys, with the NFL season here, you need a sports book with integrity and longevity like BetUS. You may already know this, but BetUS have been pioneers in the sports book industry for almost three decades, thriving and paying their loyal customer base. That is B-E-T-U-S dot com, and they have loads of bonuses. Join now or call 800-69-BET-US. That is 800-MY-BET-US. You receive a 125% sign-up bonus by using bonus code RAMS125. They've re-up and referral bonuses also. BetUS is known as America's favorite sportsbook for a lot of reasons. BetUS has all your NFL games with team and player props and loads of futures. You can bet UFC matches, props, PGA golf, round matchups, and live betting on most sports as well. The online casino has hundreds of games, and the racebook has all your horse tracks. They have every bet type imaginable, and the Sharp BetUS mobile platform is easy with full betting options. Follow my lead and get your phone online and social sports betting partner with integrity and longevity like I did. BetUS. You bet, you win, you get paid. BetUS. So, Jake, we are coming to everyone um, a few days before the Rams take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Los Angeles. That is the current Super Bowl champion team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, obviously a very good team. They are 2-0 and as well. Uh, they've been playing very good so far in their first couple of games of the season. Obviously, it's early, but nevertheless, they've been playing well. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, we can't – can't forget that they are the current Super Bowl champions, led by none other than Tom Brady, who is arguably the greatest quarterback of all time and has been playing absolutely out of his mind so far and uh, is currently on pace to you know break the season touchdown record. So, Jake, as we look to Sunday, uh, where the Bucks come to Los Angeles, what do you think is the number one thing that Rams need to be prepared for? Yeah, so the number one thing the Rams have to be prepared for uh, is going to be Tom Brady in the air raid passing attack. Um, yes, they probably won't have Antonio Brown, who is on the COVID IR, and if he's vaccinated, it's still going to be hard for him to make it for the Sunday game. Uh, but on top of that, you know, they still have uh, Godwin, they have Mike Evans, they have, um, you know, you look at Gronkowski, I mean, all over the place. I mean, there are weapons everywhere. I'm curious to see how much, you know, Scotty Miller does. Um, I'm curious to see how much Jalen Darden, the rookie out of North Texas, does. Curious to see Tyler Johnson, former fifth-round pick uh, from a year ago. Um, they have a lot of weapons. You know, Cameron Brate, O.J. Howard. I mean, plenty. The running game is something that I am definitely interested to see because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have not gotten their running game going. Um, they have obvious talent there. Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, and Giovanni Bernard, who I expect to have a bigger role this year. Uh, but if you want to beat the Buccaneers, you're going to have to score more than them, and you're going to have to stop Tom Brady, get to him, hit him, you know, hit him a lot, hit him early on, um, you know, like he did last year. That's how you're going to beat Tampa Bay. I agree. Um, I definitely think that this matchup between the Rams and the Bucks is going to be mainly a battle of the Rams defense versus the Bucks offense. And some people might think that's crazy because the Rams do have a pretty good um, offense now led by Matt Stafford. But let's be honest, there's only one Tom Brady. And with the way that he's been playing and the way that the Bucks offense has been playing and the amount of weapons that they have on that offense, 
it's going to be a major test for our defense. And we have some really good players on our defense as well. Obviously, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Darius Williams, Leonard Floyd. And they're going to be going up against Tom Brady, you know, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, uh, Gronkowski, uh, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones. So it, it is going to be an interesting matchup uh, whenever that happens. And I think, you know, you mentioned having to stop Tom Brady. I think you're absolutely right. I think that's agenda number one. Um, is going to be stopping the passing attack. And in a way, you could almost say that that's a little bit of a relief for the Rams because it seems the past couple of games, the run defense has really been what's been killing us. Um, but at the same time, it's still never an easy situation going up against Tom Brady in the passing attack. Um, Jalen Ramsey uh, obviously is the the kind of the big star in our secondary, you know, Darius Williams, you know, we have good safeties as well. Uh, Taylor Rapp's been playing well. You got Jordan Fuller, Terrell Burgess uh, moving in there. Um, you know, uh, Robert Rochelle, David Long. I'm not sure. It's slipping my mind if he's going to be available for the game Sunday. I don't think he is. He's injured, right? Um, David Long, he is healthy. Okay, so he will be playing. Yeah. So we've got all these guys in the secondary, and I think they're going to really be put to the test by Tom Brady. Um, if there's any quarterback that's not going to uh, be afraid to test a guy like Jalen Ramsey, it is Tom Brady. So I'm not saying that Tom Brady's just going to go after Jalen the whole game, but I do think that Jalen Ramsey is going to get more targets in this game than he has so far this season. Uh, so that'll be something to watch out for, and I think that our secondary is going to have to be really on their A game uh, against Tom Brady in the way that he's been playing uh, because he's just been playing honestly even better than he was last season and they won a Super Bowl last season. So I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, but yes, I think the definite number one on on the Rams defensive list is going to be stopping the passive attack, uh, the passing attack. Now, I kind of want to talk about the run defense a little bit. I think the Rams run defense – uh, when we we talked about this last episode, but against the Colts, there was times where they just looked really disoriented. It was very strange. I have talked about the Rams' run defense a lot. Not the biggest fan sometimes of of the way that they play. Uh, but do you think Tampa Bay? And we talk about the passing attack. They're obviously going to utilize that. They have Tom Brady. He's been doing very good this season in the passing game. But Tampa also has Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones, who are two pretty good running backs. Do you think that Tampa going against the Rams, um, maybe they saw some clips from last week. Maybe they've done their research. Do you think that they're going to maybe rely a little bit more on their run game than they normally do? Or do you think that they are going to kind of just stick with using Tom Brady in the passing attack? Well, I think they're going to try to get the run game going. Um, that's definitely been you know, an area that they've been trying to improve in because once they can get that going, if they can, it's only going to help the passing attack, uh, you know, with the play action right now, no one's going to buy in the play action because I mean, let's call it like it is. They're not running the football really. Um, I also, you know, I think the, the Rams run defense was really good last week. Uh, it was really just Carson Wentz and, you know, his ability to escape the pocket, make things happen, break break sacks, break tackles, what have you, uh, that made it look like it wasn't. But really, that's not really the running game, so to speak. Um, you know, they held Jonathan Taylor to 3.4 yards per carry. And he, I think he's a lot better than the backs that Tampa Bay has. So I'm not too worried about the running game. Um, you know, I think it's going to be on both sides, to be honest with you. The Buccaneers have done just a stellar job of shutting down the run. Uh, you look at what they did against Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. Um, you know, yes, of course, you know, Cordero Patterson had his rushing touchdown, but I mean, for the most part, he, he and, uh, Mike Davis really weren't able to get much going in the run game last week. Um, and now with the Rams, you know, the uncertainty with Daryl Henderson, who is a game time decision, Sony Michelle, who, you know, you and I think have talked a lot about, and, you know, we obviously like, um, I think it's putting a lot of pressure on him to have, you know, some sort of big game against, you know, one of the best run defenses we've seen in quite some time. They are just absolutely stellar against the run. They're really built up front uh, where they're susceptible to getting beat is over the top. And I feel like that's what the Rams are going to try to do. Uh, last year, you look, the Rams were able to do it uh, very well, actually. Uh, 413 yards to 251, they outgained Tampa. Normally, I would say it's last year. It's not a big deal. No worries. Uh, however, the only team that's really different 
is the Rams. Uh, the Buccaneers brought back all of their uh, starters from last season. Um, we do know that uh, Joe Tryon Shoyanka is going to take over in like in all likeliness uh, with the injury to uh, JPP. If he doesn't play, uh, Joe Tryon Shoyanka will be starting. So that's really the only difference there as opposed to last year. And Antonio Brown. Uh, Antonio Brown was their leading receiver last year as well. So that's a significant loss, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, I think looking in this one, though, you know, trying to take the top off the defense. Yeah, didn't really use Deshaun Jackson much last week. Uh, so he'll have an opportunity. Van Jefferson will have an opportunity. You have Cup. Obviously, he's playing his best football. Uh, you have Woods. Um, then, of course, you have, you know, your tight ends and, and all of that. Uh, so I, I do think the Rams are going to be very similar to last year's passing attack, except they're going to be way more open to letting, you know, Matthew Stafford, of course, throw down the field. Uh, whereas Jared Goff, you know, at times they were comfortable with it. At times they weren't. Um, they did average 5.8 yards per play last year, whereas Tampa only averaged 3.7. So Brandon Staley's Rams defense really did a nice job, uh, you know, really stifling uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the Rams also won the possession uh, battle. Uh, by almost seven minutes last year. Um, and that would be the first time all season, which they've won the possession battle. Surprisingly, Sean McVay has made a point to really doing that throughout his uh, tenure with the Rams. But since Stafford joined, that really hasn't been a big deal for them. Yeah. And, you know, you bring up what I was actually going to bring up next about this Tampa Bay team is that they brought back everyone uh, from their Super Bowl winning team which is not always the case. A lot of times you see players leave for, you know, bigger contracts or they think it's time to move on or something like that. But Tampa Bay is bringing everybody back. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to give Tampa Bay <laughs> too much credit, but I think that that um, is really unique. And I think that that was a really good move on their part. I do think they have a really solid team. And it's it, it's going to be interesting to see tomorrow. Um uh, I had a point I was about to bring up about <laughs> from something that you just said. But anyways, uh, we kind of talk about Tampa's offense going against our defense. But I want to talk about our offense for a second. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, Darrell Henderson because apparently the word as of today is that he's going to be a game time decision as of Sunday, which is two days away from now. Um, I personally am under the impression that the Rams will not play him. I think they want to give him extra time to heal. What are your thoughts on that? Life is back on sports bettors, and BetUS has your NBA, NHL, UFC, PGA, and yes, NFL betting lines up on their 27th year and live betting on all of it. Log in to BetUS, that is B-E-T, us.com or call 800-792-3887 that's 800-79-BETUS bet us for 125 percent bonuses with promo code rams125 customer service pros are ready to get your phone social and online sports betting kick off started now play with the proven mainstay in the industry bet us you bet you win you get paid. BetUS.com. Ready for an out-of-world experience, fellas? Look no further than the Performance Package 4.0 for Manscaped. That has just taken off in not only the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your whole solar system in. First scheduled for liftoff, new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, this spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even your anus. This fourth generation trimmer also features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Thanks to our advanced skin safe technology, the Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor and a new multifunction on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and is even waterproof. 
The Lawnmower 4.0 also has a 4000K LED spotlight you can turn on and off when needed for a more precise shave throughout your travels across the universe. The Performance 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker. It's like having a little astronaut to chop your worst weeds up the top of your nose and your ears. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and uses a 9000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. This nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Don't forget about the crop preserver, ball deodorant, and the crop reviver to help your little planets be on their A-game while feeling the sun's heat. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Abort Harry Balls, Buzz Lightyear, that Woody with Manscaped. Well, I kind of agree with you. Um, they do. You would probably want him, especially in this game, where you're probably not going to be able to run the ball much. Um, you would like to at least have him as a, a pass catching weapon out of the backfield. Uh, look, the Rams um, actually, you know, the last two games, whether you know anyone realizes it or not, they have started the last two games with a touchdown, the opening drive in both of those games. Stafford did not throw an incompletion. It's been big for the Rams to get out to an early lead. That's been their focus, regardless if they get the ball first, regardless if they don't, when they get the, when they are on offense, they on that first drive have finished with a touchdown. So it's been very important. Um, the bucks have given up of, uh, they've gave up 451 total yards to the Cowboys in week one. They go 348 to the Falcons, um, and those are the back to back. So that's a lot of yards. Uh, this secondary, of course, was uh, you know, beaten over the head uh, by the fact that, you know, they did lose Sean Murphy bunting, who is somebody that was really emerging as not just one of the top corners on their team, but maybe the top corner on their team. They have three safeties that I really like. I mean, you look at Jordan Whitehead, who's back from injury, came back last week. Um, of course, you have Antoine Winfield Jr. And in addition to that, you have Mike Edwards, who surprisingly had two pick sixes, very rare uh, feat there last week. Um, Jamel Dean, Carlton Davis, Ross Cockrell are your corners. To me, you look at last year, I don't feel like Robert Woods and Cooper Cup had any issue with these guys. I don't feel like they're that much or that much worse. They're not that much better or that much worse from last season. Uh, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods have better quarterback play. This could be more of the same. You could be seeing a Cup and Woods show once again. They both go over 100 yards, um, but they're going to need to strike early on. And, you know, the big thing, Alexis, going back and watching this game on film uh, last night is that the Rams actually had a chance to really take over and potentially blow out the Buccaneers in this game uh, last season. When you look, uh, they got off to a great start. They scored on top of that. They get a nice stop. Um, you know, it was a couple, you know, really. And I'm sure you remember the really ticky tack PI calls that kept the drives going on top of that. Jared Goff throwing interception right in the hands of JPP and then throwing interception uh, to Jordan Whitehead over the middle in triple coverage. That really kept the Buccaneers in the game, but the stats really tell the story. 413 to 251. Sean McVay has gone up against uh, Todd Bowles defense in the past and has had success. Uh, we'll see if it translates with a better, uh, in my opinion, a better roster. And I'll go as far to say as this is the best roster uh, the, the Buccaneers have played. This is the best team they have played since Tom Brady has taken over. And I know what you're thinking. Well, what about the Super Bowl team last year? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Patrick Mahomes had four out of the five offensive linemen starting. They were out due to injury. So he's playing with four replacement offensive linemen in that game. Can't say that they were stronger than this team with the Rams. Offensive line is really kicking some butt. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I've been really impressed with, uh, you know, Brian Allen. I've been really impressed uh, with Havenstein and Whitworth and uh, Corbett's putting some nice stuff together. Edwards has his best game uh, on, you know, Sunday last week against the uh, Colts. You know, they really just did a nice job all around. I mean, there's going to be moments where guys get in, you know, big players make big plays. Vita Vea is, of course, a huge uh, issue there. He is so massive in the trenches. He can ruin your run game. He can, you know, basically do anything there. Uh, so that's definitely a player to watch. Um, as well as, you know, I mentioned him earlier, but, uh, you know, Joe Tryon Schwenka, uh, who is, you know, filling in, 
he played 18 snaps last week. He was really good in preseason. I I believe you liked him in the draft coming out of Washington. Uh, he's a good player. So this is a huge opportunity for him. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Rob Gronkowski on the offensive side of the ball. To me, he's the key. And he's had four out of Tom Brady's nine touchdowns to start the season. They have that chemistry that goes back years. Uh, so, you know, the Rams really did a nice job last year. But the issue is Alexis going back and watching the tape. You saw two guys cover him. One guy was absolutely stellar against him. And the other guy wasn't bad. Unfortunately, the guy that was absolutely stellar is no longer on the roster. And that was John Johnson. The other guy was actually um, the starting outside linebacker, Justin Hollins who didn't have the worst effort in coverage. Uh, so we'll see what their uh, plan is. I would expect it's either going to be Jordan Fuller or, uh, you know, a mix of Jordan Fuller and Justin Hollins or, you know, maybe one or the other. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but that's kind of how I see that going with Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, I mean, I think he's obviously someone to look out for. I mean, he's still playing at a very high level. I mean, he it was either last game or the game before that. He got multiple touchdowns in one game. So I think that, you know, as far as weapons go on that Bucks offense, I mean, it's crazy because you say Antonio Brown's out, right? But they've got three other guys just in the receiving core that are absolutely insane. And Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and, and Gronkowski. And then we mentioned the running backs, Fournette and Jones. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Rams decide to kind of uh, shut down all their weapons. Uh, but I also agree with you when we talk about our offense. I do think that the Rams offense – um, has a lot more weapons than we did we went, when we went up against the Bucks the last time. And I think that Matthew Stafford is obviously one of those weapons, and I think that he uh, is going to play very well against their defense. Um, again, I do think the Bucks have a good defense. I think they are uh, very talented. However, I think so is our offense. So while it might not be a, a flashy um, kind of battle, like I think – the Rams defense versus the Bucks offense is going to be, I still think that our offense is going to be productive. I, I, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be our easiest matchup by any means. It's going to be a lot harder than it was last week against the Colts or in week one against the bears. But I think if everyone plays well and plays like they have been, I think we're going to have a lot of success. And I personally think we're going to have a lot of success in the passing game. Um, I think the strength of that Bucks defense is up front, and I think that Matthew Stafford is going to be throwing the ball even more than he did um, in the first uh, couple weeks. But we'll see. I, I still think the main matchup is with our defense and their offense, um, but I, I'm not really worried about our offense, to be honest. Yeah, you know, I, I think, like, looking at last year, keep in mind, when the Rams played the Bucs, uh, the Bucs had yet to fully get their offense, you know, clicking, right? They they had a little bit of time with Antonio Brown. He had joined the team later on in the year. Um, it really started clicking after the Rams. And it, Rams, they lost to the Rams 27-24, and then they lost to the Chiefs 27-24. They haven't lost since. I actually did some digging in that and research. I think context is needed. Um, you know, look, I'm not trying to take anything away from a team that just won a Super Bowl. But when you look at their opposing their their opponent's record, it's 66 and 62 going back to 2020 in teams that they beat. In my opinion, you know, you, you beat the Lions once. They were five and eleven. Stafford left the game early on. Uh, you beat the Falcons, who are four and twelve twice, and barely beat them on the road against. Raheem Morris, when he was the interim head coach, uh, 31 27. Uh, you beat the 7 and 9 Vikings. You beat the Washington football team at 7 and 9 with a backup quarterback, 31 and 23. You beat the Saints, who were 12 and 4, uh, but they had Breeze in his final game and he was clearly not. Uh, fully healthy in that one. Uh, you beat the Packers uh, without David Bakhtiari, 31-26. And then you beat, you destroyed the 14-2 Chiefs team, uh, 131-9, a team that had, you know, four out of the five starters out for the game. So I think in a sense, it's this recency thing where I'm not trying to say the Buccaneers aren't a good football team because I think they're number two in the league and I do think the Rams are the best team in football right now. But you know, for people saying this is an unbeatable team, uh, it, they're very beatable. I mean, the Rams beat them last season, um, and I think this team is better than the team last year. Now, you can run the idea that the team last year, the defense, was a lot better at that point in the season, having played all those games, having gelled, you know, having gotten all comfortable uh, than what they are right now, and that's fine. 
I expect this to be a high scoring game, um, but I do expect the Rams to win this one. And for, you know, for people thinking that this is unbeatable, because I've seen, um, you know, different analysts saying that you, you can't beat the Buccaneers. The Cowboys almost beat the Buccaneers week one of the season on the road. Um, and it came down to, you know, a couple, you know, really bad plays, including a dropped CD lamb catch over the middle that turned into an interception. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely, it, it's an interesting thing here because this is a team that's considered, you know, football royalty right now, but I feel like they are beatable. And this is also the team that one of the two teams that beat them down the stretch last season. So it, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, fun to watch. They also intercepted Brady twice last year. So the, you know, they had his number to an extent. They had a forced fumble that was called an incomplete pass. It was called back. That could have absolutely changed the game. Um, you know, the, the familiarity is kind of interesting because you have, you know, uh, Raheem Morris, who was once coach of the, the Buccaneers. You have Sean McVay, who got his NFL start with Tampa. Kevin O'Connell was once teammates with Tom Brady. There's a lot of storylines uh, in this game. Um, and if you didn't know, Alexis, the Rams were six and one of the last seven meetings against the Buccaneers. Their only loss came at home in 2019, the most bizarre fashion ever, a 55 40 game against not Tom Brady, Jameis Winston. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of, kind of hit it out that there. You think it's going to be a high scoring game. So I do want to get into our predictions. Um, for the game and let's let's start with stat predictions we'll get to the score at the end Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll let you go first but who if you had to give a couple of predictions you know stat prediction wise sacks touchdowns interceptions anything like that what are you predicting for this game well I have uh, a few here so I have Matthew Stafford throwing for over 350 yards I have Cooper Cup going for 150 yards I have the Rams sacking Brady three times and the Rams generating at least one turnover I think that the Rams are gonna have one interception two sacks. I think Cooper Cup's going to have two touchdowns in this game. I think he's on a roll. I think he is Stafford's favorite receiver right now. And I think that Cooper Cup is going to have a big game. So that's kind of my stat predictions. I know they're not glamorous. I know they're not flashy. But again, we're playing a really good team. So I think that we have to keep that in mind and be realistic. Um, no, I agree with you. I think that, I mean, you you have to be realistic. Um, you can't just per- yeah, like if you were just to predict every week, yeah, you know, Cooper Cup's going to catch four touchdowns. That just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, I, no, that, I think that's uh, you and I kind of have the same idea that they're going to generate at least one turnover. You have two sacks. I have three. You have Cooper Cup, you know, catching two touchdowns. I went the yards route with 150 uh, yards. Um, and then I threw Stafford in there for 350 yards. I would like to see Stafford hit 400. Um, you know, the Rams threw a ton last year because they couldn't run the, the football. The only luck they really had was Cam Akers. And of course, he's not playing in this one. And he didn't have a ton of luck. He just he broke a couple runs. Henderson had a, a hard time. And so did, um, you know, Malcolm. So, you know, looking at this, I mean, the Rams just might kill the run and just be like, you know, what, we're just going to beat them through the air. And if that's the case, then that's how the NFL is starting to be. Uh, it, it seems like now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, in my in my original, so some of you, I've talked about this in the podcast before, before the season started, I wrote an article where I predict, predicted all of the Rams matchups and kind of what was going to happen and the scores and everything. And I actually had the Rams losing this game 31 to 24. Um, I just wasn't sure early in the season. I felt like we were going to have a really good offense, but I felt like so were the Bucks, and I wasn't sure – how it was going to go. But I just feel like seeing the way that the Rams have been playing, I think the Rams are going to win this too. I understand both teams are 2-0. I'm not going to be surprised if we win. I'm not going to be surprised if the Bucs win. We are both two very good teams. However, something in me is just telling me to go with the Rams. I'm predicting the Rams are going to win 31-28 to off of a fourth quarter field goal by Matt Gay. That's my prediction for this game. Um... And we'll see. I mean, I'm excited for this game. This is, in my opinion, going to be the best matchup. I shouldn't say the best matchup, but I think it's going to be our toughest matchup by far this season if you look at our schedule. 
Very good team in the Tampa Bay Bucks. Not taking anything away from them. I'm excited for this game. I think it's going to be a real test. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. Um, I'm going to go. I mean, I think this is the game of the year. I think this decides the landscape of the NFL. Uh, if, you know, obviously blood in the water, right? If if the Rams beat the Bucks, it opens them up and they're susceptible to getting beat by other teams. Um, you know, it's all about how you respond, uh, you know, with your losses. So, the Rams have a tough test here because if they lose the Bucks, they still have the, the Cardinals upcoming and then the Seahawks. They have a tough stretch coming up. Um, now they're 2-0. and I'm going to go with the Rams here. Uh, I have them winning 38-34. They're at home. That's a good feeling. They won last year on the road. I feel like the Rams are just better. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, the Rams might have been arguably better last year with Goff, uh, and that's saying a lot. Um, but now you look, um, this team in my opinion, is better. I mean, you know, would it be nice to have John Johnson for this game? Absolutely. But really, that's my only weakness. I mean, maybe having Cam Akers wouldn't hurt either or, you know, a healthy Daryl Henderson because even if he plays, we know he's not going to be 100%. Uh, So I look at this game and I just think I could see Stafford going down the field, winning the game uh, on a touchdown. Uh, So I have the Rams uh, 38-34, um, and, and, you know, I think it's going to be a fun one and I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if it's anything like last year and, uh, the Rams don't have those miscues and Tampa sputters, it could get ugly because it's one of those things where, you know, with these offenses, it's going to be so hectic and you're going to probably have to keep up and, and either get stops or you're going to get lapped. And I feel like the Rams, you know, with that momentum building, uh, you know, they could definitely end up lapping, quote, quote unquote, lapping the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this race to however many points it takes to win a, this football game. I don't think it'll be 54, 51 or anything like crazy like that. I don't think it's going to be like the Chiefs game. But if it was, that would certainly be a treat. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, we're a couple of days away, guys. Uh, we will be back, obviously, with an episode um, either that night or Monday um, recapping the game. Uh, but until then, guys, as always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft. You can follow Jake at JK Bogan. And guys, just a couple more days and it's Rams game day. But until then, stay safe, take care, and go Rams. Bet with the three-decade leader, BetUS. Join now for 125% bonus or 200% bonus with crypto using promo code RAMS125. And bet sports, casino, horses, pop culture, and more at BETUS.com. You bet, you win, you get paid. BetUS. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and make sure to use code DTR. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped.